on the day of judgment brothers and sisters Adam will ask how many how many of my does, how many of my children are for the fire 999 out of every thousand are for the fire but Allah chose you Allah chose you brothers and sisters how could you feel worthless how could you feel worthless when you are a member of the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam you belong to the nation of the best of all the creation Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the best of the creation that's not an exaggeration to say that he is the best of the creation you are a member of his nation how could you feel worthless my dear brothers how could you feel worthless my dear sisters you are the servant of allah you're not the servant you're not the servant of alat or al uzza or isa or Krishna, or Ganesh, or whoever, or whatever, you are not, or you should not be, the servant of fashion, or money, or fame, or beauty, or power, or position. You are the servant, you are the slave of Allah. Everyone is a slave, by the way, to something. Everyone's a slave to someone, else, but you are the slave of Allah. The king of the kings. Subhanallah. The king of the kings, the lord of all the creation, the one who controls every atom of the universe. You know when someone becomes Muslim? You know when I take shahada from people? You know one of the things I say? Because there's, oh, my parents, they're going to say this and, you know, such and such and lots of, you have, of course you have worries. I say, listen, you are not becoming the servant of one who is powerless. You are becoming the servant of Allah. The one who controls every atom of the universe. And you have chosen to be the one who is obedient to him and to follow his deen. You are noble in the sight of Allah because you have chosen to worship him alone and to avoid the false gods. So how would you feel worthless? How would you feel worthless, my brothers and sisters, when you belong to this precious ummah? Also, we find that depressed people feel inappropriate guilt and regret. You know, regret, brothers and sisters, is good. And guilt is good if you have done something haram. In fact, it's a condition of repentance that you feel remorse and you feel regret. And you feel guilty about it. That's a condition. But you have to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He, he is al ghafur He is a tawab He is the forgiving. He is the one, subhanAllah, sub, how much does Allah love repentance? But how much does He love it? How much does He love it, my brothers and sisters? You know how much Allah loves it? SubhanAllah. Imagine this. I want you to imagine you're in the desert. It's hot. The sun is beating down on you. You're sweating. You've traveled. And you're in the middle of the desert. Dunes and dunes and piles of dunes. And you're so hot. You're so tired. You fall down and you sleep. And your camel. And which is all your water. All your provisions. It goes. You wake up and your camel has gone. You know you're going to die. And you're going to die a really horrible death. Imagine that. And resigned to the inevitability, inevitability of it, you fall asleep. And then you wake up and your camel is right there. And you jump up 
and you say, O oh Allah, I am your Lord and you are my servant. And you just say that because you're so excited, you just get confused and you mix everything up. The Prophet ﷺ said that Allah is more pleased with the repentance of one of you than this man is with finding his camel. SubhanAllah. It almost makes you want to sin so you can do some tawbah. Right? And of course, I'm not suggesting that, brothers and sisters, because as Umar ibn al Khattab said, it's easier to stop sinning, it's easier to actually avoid sin than make a really sincere tawbah for your sins. It's actually easier. Yeah? It's actually a lot easier just not to sin. But the point being is that this is how Allah loves forgiveness. And Allah said in the Hadith Qudsi that when one of us, when one of us, subhanAllah, if we come to Allah with sins as great as the heavens and the earth and we turn to Allah and we ask His forgiveness, not making any shirk with Him, not making any partners and rivals with Him, not only will Allah forgive us, but Allah will give us good deeds nearly as great as the evil that we have done to replace it. And a servant commits a sin. And he says, Oh Allah, I have sinned. Forgive me. And Allah says, I have a servant. I have a, a servant who knows that they have sinned. And they know that they have a Lord who punishes sins and who forgives when they ask for forgiveness. And I have forgiven him. And again the servant says, I have sinned. And again Allah says the same thing. And again the servant, Allah says, and the servant says, I have sinned. And Allah says, do what you like. As long as you, meaning as long as you keep seeking forgiveness from me, you keep turning to me, you keep asking me, Allah will keep forgiving you. As long as you are sincere, Allah will keep forgiving you, brothers and sisters. It's not an encouragement to sin. Because I want, to, I want you to understand something important. The reason why Allah told us not to do something is because that's bad for you. It's going to make your life more difficult. Right? That's the reality. Right? You know, Allah has made it haram for men to stare at women. And for women to stare at men, lower your, gu lower your gaze. Lower your gaze and gu guard your private parts. Why? Because if you stare at women, brothers, right, it's not good for you. It's not good for you. There's lots of ways we could talk about how bad it is for you. Allah didn't say don't look and stare at women because Allah doesn't want you to enjoy all the beautiful forms of women and this and that, right? No. He's telling you don't do it because it's not good for you. How is it good for you? Even if you're married, what's the benefit of that? Why? It is only going to create a type of false desire in your heart. It is only going to make you discontent. It's going to create discontent for you. Right? And there is another issue. Looking at lewd pictures, well, let's just say pornography. If you look at that type of stuff, what is that? What is what image? What what does that make you think about women in general? How will you treat and think about women in general? It's not a good thing. It has negative consequences. So Allah is telling us not to do these things for a wisdom, right? So d don't think that, oh, I can just sin and ask Allah for forgiveness. No, because sin has an evil effect. Sin is going to have an evil effect. It's going to destroy you or corrupt you or damage you psychologically or physically. You can repent from drinking alcohol, but you're still going to have sclerosis of the liver. Cirrhosis of the liver? Is that how you say it? Cirrhosis? Right, if you drink too much, you're still going to have that. 
I mean, may, yeah, Allah will forgive you the sin, but the consequence of it, you're still going to face it in your life, right? 